be found in Galatians chapter 5, verses 16 and 17. Uh -huh. Our sermonic thought on this day comes from those two verses. Let me, let me read. Live by the Spirit. I'm reading the New International Version. All right. Live by the Spirit, I say, and do not gratify the desires of the flesh. Uh -huh. For what the flesh desires is opposed to the Spirit. All right. And what the Spirit desires is opposed to the flesh. Yeah. For these are opposed to each other to prevent you from doing what you want. That's all right right there. They are they are opposed. You know, when things are opposed to each other, they kind of they kind of try to stay away from each other. Now our our subject for today is Domestic violence opposes the spirit. All right, all right. Domestic violence opposes the the spirit. I I've been moved recently today by this whole issue of domestic violence, and I'm concerned specifically about Christians and their understanding of what domestic violence is, how it impacts their lives. Amen. It wasn't until the late 1960s that domestic violence even had a name. Amen. It was, it existed, has existed for as long as man has existed. Yeah. But it didn't get a name until the late 1960s. Right. Before then, it neither had name nor identity in American life. All right. Especially as sad as it seems. Especially amongst African American people. Especially amongst us. Grandma would say, us. Specifically in this country, it was viewed as a social issue uh, that affected only a small number of relationships. Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, but then came the civil rights era. Y'all know what I'm talking about when I say the civil rights era. Yeah. The yeah. days of Dr. King. Uh -huh. The days of the SCLC. Yeah. Southern Leadership Christian Conference. But those were the times when we, we gained in, in civil rights and, and the, the civil rights movement affected not only the civil rights of black people. Somebody got to hear what I'm saying today. We can't forget that this was a time, even during civil rights, when y'all that were here, some, some of the young people may not remember this, but along with the civil rights movement, we had anti-war demonstrations. All of this going on at, at the same time. I'm so thankful to God for it because it, it helped to shape our country as it is today we were we were going through growing pains during that time I, 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 I come to learn about what well, about black theology African-American theology and African-American theologians who helped to shape our view of who God is and how God works in the black church I, I believe that, that, that there are some differences for us because of our issues in life. Yeah. We had theologians like James Cone, who was a, a black theologian, and, and Howard Thurman, who was 
a black theologian who taught us about uh, a, 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 a disinherited Jesus and, right. and how God works in our lives to, to shape our relationships in our homes and, and on our jobs. Right. Black liberation theology was born through the feminist movement. Right. Oh, somebody got to hear what I'm saying today. The women, in other words, played a big part in African American black theology. Uh, 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 black theology. I'm talking about a liberation theology. Let me see if I can help somebody else. It's important that we understand. Liberation theology. Theology that is designed to set you free. See, we got to understand that Dr. King was a liberation theologian. His, his theology was designed to set you free from whatever was holding you down. Black theology. Uh, 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 this, this whole idea of this feminist platform was, was, was used to, to raise awareness of a crisis that was going on in the black church that was being held down and, and subdued by, by males. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, I'm not, I'm not scared to say that because there was a time when, when women didn't have a voice in the church. Y'all couldn't stand up and say nothing. Man kept their foot on your neck. After slavery was over, it wasn't over for all of us. Many of us stayed uh, 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 underlings to those who were in charge. And an interesting fact uh, is, is that uh, uh, this whole idea of liberation theology was, was widespread. It, it was even... It was even wider than most of us want to think about or even believe. Uh, let, me, let me give everyone an interesting fact. An interesting fact is that, that here, right here in the United States, there were, there were advocacy groups uh, during the, the, the 1960s, the early and the late 1960s. There were advocacy groups for animals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There were advocacy Y'all got to hear what I'm saying today. There were to see groups for animals yeah. before they were advocacy groups for women. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody got to hear what I'm saying today. Yeah. There were, there's, in other words, we we were worried about the animals, yeah. but we weren't worried about the women. Yeah. Uh, 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 we weren't we weren't worried about this whole scope of domestic violence uh, that exists in the church. Even today, uh, 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 black liberation theology gave birth to more than, than most even understand or are willing to accept. If we look at the black community, the African American community, if we look at the black churches, domestic violence has been in crisis mode for quite some time. Uh, what, what, we, what we've been doing is we, we've, been, we've been sweeping it under the rug. We've been making believe it didn't exist. Uh, it, it, is, it is an issue that has been under-addressed for quite some time. I dare you to go and try to find a preacher that has the nerve to talk about or preach about domestic violence in the church. Most preachers try to stay away from it. But without a doubt, I've understood and I've come to understand that, that as a pastor, it's important for me to, to let the people know that God is aware. Yeah, tell it, tell it. You see, we might be able to sweep it under a rug and we might be able to hide it. Yeah. We might be able to make believe that it don't exist. Uh -huh. But God wants me to tell somebody, he already knows it exists. Yeah. And he knows where it exists. Yeah. Hmm. It's been under address. Without a doubt, it's been... Black women and black children have been the most vulnerable. Now, please don't misunderstand what I'm saying. I am not saying that it doesn't exist in other communities. All right. Because it does. All right. What I'm saying is that it is most prevalent in the African-American community. Yeah. Uh, it's a sad comment.